Hey, what's up guys? So as you all know, uh, radar detectors come with power cables that are designed to uh, plug the detector into your car's cigarette lighter port. That said, I'm now seeing uh, some new power cables that are coming out uh, that are designed to plug into a USB port instead. And testing a cable like this, I found uh, there's two primary use cases where a cable like this might actually be preferable. And so in this video, let's go ahead and talk about, uh, well, this cable and the situations where uh, you may find that a cable like this could be helpful as well. So nowadays, the primary way to plug in your radar detector for power is to plug it in here uh, with an RJ11 cable like this. It's kind of like your standard phone jack looking cable. Again, you guys all know this. And then uh, for firmware updates and whatnot, you've got a USB port on the side. Most companies are using micro or mini USB. It's kind of an outdated connector at this point here in 2023. And so for that reason, I appreciate companies like Redenso, uh, which have actually been switching over to USB Type-C for not only your firmware updates, but also for power as well. The power cable that they ship with is also a cigarette lighter power cable, but the nice thing is it goes to a USB Type-C like that. Uh, you can just plug it into the detector and now you've got power. There's also the Rocky Mountain Radar Odin. Uh, this detector is also powered by USB Type-C, but this is a pretty bad detector, so we're just going to ignore it for now. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, Redenso DS1, which is a great detector. Uh, now, what if you're in a car, and this is becoming more and more prevalent nowadays, where there's no cigarette lighter that's available as, at all. Like a lot of cars nowadays are just only offering USB ports to charge your phone or things like that, but they're kind of starting to do away uh, with the cigarette lighter ports. Well, if that's the case, the solution's really simple. You can just grab a USB cable like this. Uh, I'll go ahead and plug it into my car right there into the USB port. And then I'm gonna plug the other end here into the DS1, and then the detector is just gonna power right up. So it makes a really simple solution to uh, get the detector plugged right into the car. Of course, you can hardwire it or something, but just for like a simple, convenient, and quick uh, power cable option, using USB can make things really easy. And so for that reason, if your car only has a USB Type-C port, the Rodenso DS1, I think, is a great option. Now, if you want to maybe try a different detector, there are other solutions. Again, you can, of course, hardwire it or something. Uh, another thing that you can try is they make adapters like this that basically convert a USB uh, to a cigarette lighter port like this, and then you can basically just plug in any detector that you want. It's a little clunky, but it would do the job. However, to simplify things, you can now just get a direct USB to RJ11 connector and use this with pretty much any detector that uses this type of connector. However, you may actually run into issues depending on how much power your car's USB port can put out. Uh, if you don't have enough power, you might run into an issue like this to where, I'll go ahead and plug in uh, an R8, for example, but as you see, uh, nothing is actually going to happen. It's going to stay uh, powered off here the whole time. I'll try the same thing next with an Escort detector, the Redline 360C. Uh, it'll take a couple seconds to power on, but then once it starts, you'll see the display turn on, you'll see some of the arrows start to light up, but then the detector shuts itself off. And then finally, we'll try it with the V1 Gen 2. Uh, we'll go ahead and plug this in, uh, and as you can see, some of the lights come on, but you've got this weird kind of funky thing going on here with the display. That said, I don't think this is due to uh, the cable. I think this is actually due to that USB port in my car. I'll try another one here real quick. I've got this aftermarket charging brick installed in my car as well that lets me plug in a bunch of different dash cams or USB devices, really helpful for testing. And when I plug the same cable into that, now when I start testing some of these detectors, it's a little different story. So we'll go ahead and start with the uh, R8 first. So you can see in this situation, it just boots right up uh, like normal. Then the Redline 360C, uh, we'll go ahead and power this one on. As you're gonna see, it's just gonna go ahead and uh, boot right up uh, and just go all the way through the whole boot process. And then finally, same thing here uh, with the V1 Gen 2. Plug it in, just boots right up here like normal. And so for that reason, your mileage may vary here. It's definitely nice having a cable like this that can plug in via USB, but depending on how much power uh, your car can output through the various USB ports, it may or may not work with your detector. So definitely keep an eye out for that. I've also noticed that when this cable is struggling to power the detector, there's this uh, kind of high-pitched whine that it emits as well. It sounds like it's kind of coming from this part. This is the voltage converter. Uh, USB, it's a five volt output, uh, but your detector actually requires 12 volts. So it needs to step it up here from five volts to 12. But either way though, while this cable can work, again, your mileage may vary depending on the uh, power output of the different USB ports in your specific car. Then as far as the second use case of where a cable like this I find to be beneficial is actually if you're uh, trying to power your detector at home. Let's say maybe you're watching one of my tutorial videos, right? And you're trying to run through the different settings uh, and get your detector program before you go into the car. Uh, in that case, well, you can just plug this into a USB port, maybe plug it into your computer or plug it into like a phone charger or something, and then just have your detector powered on while you're sitting in front of the computer or just sitting and relaxing at home. Now, up to this point, I've been using this USB to cigarette lighter adapter. I've got like a half dozen of these for testing all sorts of things. And it's been nice for just like maybe plugging in, you know, a cigarette lighter adapter like this for your radar detector, plug this into like a phone charger or whatever else. And then boom, now you've got a power source 
uh, for your detector while you're sitting at home. That said, just being able to simplify the whole thing and just go like, you know, straight USB to RJ11 does help to make things a little bit easier to get set up and up and running. And in my experience with the different phone chargers and USB chargers that I've got at my desk, they all supply enough power to power different detectors just fine. And if you'd like to pick up one of these cables, they're available on Amazon. Some of the cables are being sold by Plozo. Some are being sold under the name Stsakzamu. And the one that I bought uh, happens to be from Jusvekip. The names are all pretty crazy, clearly, uh, but I'll link to the one that I happen to use just in case you're curious. Now that said, there's also another option that's available and it's designed to plug into detectors that have a barrel connector for the power port instead of an RJ11 port. And this can be helpful for detectors like the Whistler Titan or the Redenso Pro-M, for example, they use uh, barrel connectors here on the sides of the detector. And while I haven't tried any of these aftermarket cables for these detectors, in case you guys are wondering, uh, here's the barrel connector for the Titan. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, plug it in here to the side of the detector. Uh, and as you're gonna see, the detector is just gonna go ahead and uh, power on like this. Uh, additionally, just through trial and error, I've also found that this cable is gonna work uh, for the Redenso Pro-M as well. So if we go ahead and just plug it into the Pro-M next, so you can see uh, it's gonna go ahead and power on the Whistler cable here, powering the Pro-M as well. And so if you were to pick up this aftermarket cable, it looks like it should work for the Whistlers and the Redenso. Over on the listing for the cable, they mentioned that it's available for different Cobra detectors, uh, as well as for some of the lower end Unidens and for some Whistlers. That said, reading over some of the reviews, I have seen some complaints with people having compatibility issues with certain Cobra detectors. I don't know if it's anything regarding the cable or if it's kind of similar USB port issues, kind of like what I'm seeing here in my car. Uh, so again, your mileage may vary, but that's another option in case you're using a detector that has uh, a barrel connector instead of your RJ11 cable. And so with that said, if you're driving in a car that doesn't have a cigarette lighter port, uh, and so you're not able to plug in your detector that way, there are some detectors, again, like the Redenso DS1, where you can just plug it in directly via a USB port, and that is very convenient. Alternatively, if you're using a detector that uses a different type of connector for power, like RJ11 or something, you can just plug it in like this and then get the cable that just plugs into your car's USB port as well. Again, your mileage may vary depending on if your car can output a sufficient power to power your detector, so you can always give it a shot. Amazon, luckily their returns make this whole process really easy in case it doesn't work. If you've got maybe multiple ports, you could try multiple in your car, uh, but this could potentially be a solution just to give you another way to uh, power your detector if your car uh, doesn't have cigarette ladder ports. And then of course, I mean, you can always hardwire or something for permanent installation too and just run it to your fuse box and just skip the whole power cable hanging down the dash too. And then finally, if you want to go through and like uh, start messing with some of the different settings uh, while you're at home instead of having to go to the car, maybe you're looking over some tutorial online or maybe you're testing something out, talking to people on the forums, whatever the case is, if you want to mess around with your detector at home, you can always get a USB cable and just plug it into your laptop or phone charger or whatever else and not have to uh, sit in the car like I'm doing right now <laughs> uh, to mess with your detector and play around with the different settings. And so with that said, yeah, this is a look as far as a new power cable. I'm really glad to see that there's new options that are available like this. I definitely hope that more and more manufacturers are gonna kind of start moving away from micro and mini USB like this and start moving to USB type C. Again, it's 2023, I think it definitely makes sense. It might be a little bit more expensive, but I do think uh, that it is time, there's advantages, but in case you're using a detector that uses an RJ port like this for power, at least you have an option now to use a USB connector, assuming your car can actually output enough power for that too. Uh, actually, one last thing. On that note, it does look like detectors do play better when they uh, natively support USB. So I've just got like a straight USB cable here. Took a look at it earlier in the video, but uh, if I go ahead and plug in this cable, uh, it's gonna go ahead and instantly uh, power on the detector as well. We've got no issues, uh, even in the exact same USB port that had issues for the other detectors with the RJ cables. Uh, the DS1 here that just uses native USB seems to work better. And so it does seem like there's still an advantage to having a detector that's natively powered by USB and not having to do uh, maybe some aftermarket cables. So, even though you can kind of get around some of that stuff with cables, it does look like natively having USB Type-C for power is still an advantage nonetheless. But again, at least we've got some options in the meantime before, I don't know if detectors are gonna start switching over to USB Type-C, but I do hope that they start to do that more and more over time. And so with that said, that's it for now. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys are doing great and I'll see you in the next video.